Welcome friends, it is I, Girls Last Graph, and it's time for the vlog! And in the background is a Medusa game. Now, the thing is, I'm gathering Medusa footage for her guide, and... I try to call ADC. I did not get ADC. We're doing a four-man conk, and what happens is the fifth man usually wants to do something weird. I didn't get ADC. Of all the roles the fifth man wanted, it was ADC, so I didn't get it. But they wanted to go ADC Kali, so assassin in the duo lane means you gotta put your hunter somewhere, so I went, okay, I'll go Medusa. I've never done it before, but I'll do it. We'll see how it goes. So we got ADC Kali, uh, Capri support, Medusa in the mid, um, Odin solo, and then jungle Hebo. Hebo's there so that we have a mage somewhere as well. And Hebo's a really good jungler. Now, you're going to see in this match, I'll just give away the start of it. It's going to go really south on us really bad because the, the match started kind of interestingly, and I don't know how to play Medusa. So I get wrecked. Uh, we have a lot of trouble the first half of this match, but I'm playing in comms with, it's it's pan, it's black, and we're playing with fire, and under comms we're just talking and we're keeping in mind a, cer a certain fact, that is, Kali and Hebo are on our team. Kali and Hebo are late game monsters, so we're keeping that in mind. Even if I feed, even if Odin feeds, and even if Kepri feeds somehow, as long as Hebo is able to keep in tempo... As long as Kali's able to get ahead, we can win this match because Kali's a beast late game and Hebo's a beast late game. I can contribute with my ultimate, Odin can contribute with his ultimate, and Kefri can contribute like hell with his ultimate. So, we hold out to the late game. And that's something you have to do sometimes. And this is why you don't see me surrendering in this match is because we kept that in mind. As long as we had Hebo or Kali not dying a lot, we had a chance for the late game. Because if you watch my if you watch my stream games, uh, I'm always analyzing the match and I'm keeping attention. I'm looking where do I think the cracks are on our team and on the enemy team, and do I think we can win or not? And even when it doesn't look like uh, we're losing yet, I can tell when we're going to lose, and I'll do a surrender early because I already know it's going to be a loss, and we can move on to the next one. And that usually depends on my teammate's skill, on how uh, the enemy team's going, which players on the enemy team are getting ahead, which team, which players on our team are getting ahead or behind. And just analyzing it that way, and I can evaluate whether we should be surrendering early or not. But because Kali was doing pretty well in this match, and because Hebo, though getting wrecked a little bit, he kept trying to farm and do all right, I knew that we did not need to surrender yet, and we did have a chance to win this game in the late game. And you're going to see us get to the late game, and you're going to see us fighting pretty hard to get there and win the game. So it's a very interesting lesson to watch that, and seeing how we knew to hold on and get to the end of this thing. It's also partially on the enemy team not playing as well as they could have. You're going to see the enemy support rotating a little too much, which leaves the ADC room uh, for Kali to do some work in the match. You're going to see that. You're also going to see just a really weird build out of Isis. Isis goes for a supportish build instead of a killer mage build, which they suffer for later on in the match as well. The enemy team just did not evaluate the situation as well, and because of that, we were able to just pull it out in the end. You're going to see how that happens. Not too well because I'm doing Medusa and I'm actually getting wrecked. I do better later on as the match goes on, but um, you're going to see just how that goes. Now, uh, Smite goes, you got the new Soul skin. It's a pretty lame skin. Like, it looks cool, but it's a pretty lame skin. I don't know. It's, it doesn't look as good as the other two uh, skins, as the Apollo skin and the uh, the Scylla skin. It's all right looking. I don't know. It's it's a cool blue, but that's about it. I don't, I don't, it's not, not, not a lot on there. Um, Death Scythe, uh, Thanatos, we're gonna buy that skin. It's not as good as it could be, though. The Scythe just looks really weird. Like, I'm not a big fan of how the Scythe looks. The skin looks alright. It looks alright. We're, we're gonna own that one. Gutter Snipe, Cupid, what the balls is that? That's a really weird looking skin to me. Th that skin bothers me. It really does. I don't know why. But it does. And, um, there was another skin, wasn't there? Oh yeah, Drummer Raijin. He got a skin pretty damn fast. That's surprising to see, because... Uh, Certain gods, like when they first came out, they didn't have a skin for the long... Oh, Capri. There you go. Capri didn't have a skin for the very long time. Same thing goes for a Wheelix. Like, certain gods just didn't have a skin for a long... Oh, Medusa didn't have a skin for a long time. Raijin gets a skin within a week or two weeks. Jesus. That's that's pretty quick turnover there. I think I'm not Terrace who also got a skin pretty fast. Unless that was a tier two. I can't remember right now. But just, wow. Those skins came out quick. Um, let's see. Just keep talking about Smite. Um, We've moved to a three smite a week format. This opens up a little more room for us to do more machinima and more guide work. And also because I'm just not enjoying smite that much right now. The balance is a piece of crap. The servers are pieces of crap. 
and just uh, ugh. and just looking at the pro scene, I'm not really having any fun watching the pro scene at all. Like relegations was kind of boring to me. I'm not that the pro scene's gonna need to develop. My problem with the pro scene is anytime a team loses, like when a team doesn't win the big championship, they just uh, they just get destroyed and taken apart. A team doesn't stick together unless they win. The only team, as far as I know, that stuck together is Paradigm. That's it. And Epsilon because Epsilon won. That's it. Like every team got broken apart because that's how esports works. Esports doesn't have a very good longevity to it. Teams get reformed all the time. Instead of teams trying to work together and become a better, well-oiled machine together, they just break apart. And because of that, we just don't really see just long-standing teams that people can be fans of. So you either become fans of a brand or you become fans of a certain player or a couple players. And that's it. But you never see a team stick together. And it's really annoying. And so it's like, you have to really like a team all over again, unless you just like the team that won last year. Like, I really liked C9. I liked them before they won, then they won, and I really liked them going into the thing, and then they unfortunately lost, and I was really disappointed to see them break apart. So now, I got no teams I care about right now. Paradigm, I guess, because I like the people there, but that's it. I don't really care about the esports scene at all. Like, it's, I don't know, we'll see as it develops later on, but that's it. Balance is crap. Balance is absolute crap. You're kidding me. Like, beads got nerfed like hell. Sanctuary is bleh. Like, the cooldowns on them are trash. They have trash cooldowns. CC reduction as a stat is a piece of, is a waste of time. CC is the king of this game. Everyone just gets destroyed because of it. It's kill or be killed. There's not a lot of defense nymphs going on here. What you do is you waste someone's beads, you waste someone's sanctuary, and they've got such a long time to the next one, you just go on them again and kill them. You can kill them two or three times before they get beads and sank again if you put the focus on them correctly. It's just, it's a flowy game. Smite is a flowy game. It's freaking kill or be killed. You just kill them. You take them out, waste their bees, wake their sanctuary, and then kill them afterwards. Because you have so much CC. You got Ymir on your team? Ymir's gonna have a field day. Ymir don't care. Ymir never cares. You have Kumba? You Kumba don't care. You're gonna see a really amazing Kumba game coming up, by the way. Kumba don't care. Guardians just don't care. Warriors don't care. Warriors are still stupid in this game. Warriors and Guardians are still stupid. They're still stupid. Even with the change to the tank items, they're still stupid gods. They can deal a lot of punishment, they can do a lot of CC, they can take a lot of punishment. They're still stupid in this game. Balance is a waste of time to even consider anymore. It's just play the stupid gods now. Forget it. hi -res doesn't know how to balance, I should give up on that thought. They just don't know how to balance. I am done thinking about that. You know why we don't do patch notes videos anymore? Because it would just be me ranting every freaking two weeks, going, Where's the balance? Does hi -res know how to balance? No. Should I keep being surprised by that? No. Am I just burning my gears here? Yes. Waste of my damn time. Waste of my freaking time. And waste of your time, too, for me to even rant about it. Because we all know high res can't balance anymore. They had a good balance at one point, and that was a magical time. That went out the window a long time ago. And their servers have sucked since the existence of Smite. I don't know, they can't get better servers. I feel like they're just cheap on the servers because every game is... A freaking just a 4v5 or a 5v4. Every game is a 4v5 or a 5v4. Or someone lag spikes up to 500. Sometimes it's me. Someone just spikes up in con in connection. Like I'm playing and then all of a sudden warriors go like, I have a 500 ping. It's like, well, that's not going to work out. Or another play goes, they have a 300 ping. And we're talking like NA only people playing, not EU people coming over. Just NA people playing on an NA server and they just spike up on the connections. We see people DC all the time. It's just really frustrating trying to play the game and you can't get a real match because people are just lagging like crazy. The server's going to hell. People are DCing from the game. It is just really frustrating to try to get a real game. When half of my games are 4v5s or someone spikes to hell to the point that they're basically half a player, when it's half of my freaking game, sometimes it feels like it's even more than that. It is too frustrating to play the game. If I ever quit Smite, it will not be because balance is a piece of crap. It will not be because high res is annoying with whatever thing they're doing. They could do, like, nude skins at this point. It'd be really annoying. I would be really annoyed by that. But what really would kill it for me is these goddamn servers. And the fact I haven't quit over this already is only because I like making guides and videos for you guys. That's the only reason. I would have quit this game if I was playing for fun a long time ago. And that's partially why we're down to three a week, because I'm not having that much fun. And I have to be honest, with you and to with myself, I shouldn't force it. If I force it, it's going to look fake to everybody. And you don't want me to be fake. You want me to be real with you. You want me to be honest with you. 
You don't want me to fake and lie to you. I should be honest. There is the saying of fake it till you make it, but I want to be that way with you guys. I want to be honest with y'all. I want to be straight up. I want to, I want to give it straight to you. Straight to you. I'm not liking Smack right now. I'm going to play it. I have fun when I'm playing with viewers. I don't have fun when I'm playing it on my own. I only play Smite when I stream now because I just hate playing with randoms. Because they either do weird stuff or they just complain the whole time. Like, my viewers will not complain as much as they used to because they understand now that complaining doesn't help. If you're on tilt, it doesn't help. When I'm on tilt, it doesn't help. Like, I'm trying to make measures so that when I'm on tilt, it doesn't make things worse. But... You got just got to be honest. That's the best I can do. You got to be honest. Because if you're not, it's just going to eat you up inside. Like, there is just, you can be professional and just do better. Like, what I should be doing is I just got to do better when I'm being annoyed with the game. That's something I really got to work on. Because one game, like, last stream was a 4v5 match. And then someone was lagging so bad. They were like 500 ping. Then the next game was someone at another 500 ping. It was just bad connections every match. Or it was my ping. My ping was going up to 400. It was just such bad games. The server was just a piece of shit. Every freaking match. It was so frustrating. It got to the point where I just kept saying F you high res. While I'm just playing like F you high res. Just F you. F you high res. Every time my ping went up like. Oh my god. I've been dealing with this for three plus years. They still have the worst servers I've ever experienced. I say this over and over like every couple months. League of Legends never had this problem. Dota 2 never had this problem. Heroes of the Storm, I have never seen that ever happen. CSGO never had that. TF2 never had that. There's only one other game that had sh shitty servers. That was Brink. I have never seen servers worse than high res Their servers are just awful. And it gets so frustrating. And top that off as well, the Machinimas are such a pain in the ass to make because their spectators are such a piece of crap. Their Machinimas, the Machinimas, they could be so much more amazing. But because the spectators are so bad, they're just not as good as they could be. Like... The Valentine's one was really good. It took so much work to make it happen, though. If the spectator was better, it would not take as much work. And we could actually make it even better, even flashier. I have more ideas I want to do. It took me 10 hours to do a 10-second clip. You know how frustrating that is? Because I know that time could get cut down so I could work on another piece of Machinima. Machinima's going to be... They're just going to take so long to come out just because of the way Smite works. Because they just have such a bad spectator. Sure, I can do kill montages. Those are a lot easier to do. It's just putting them together a lot better. But I want to put some little edits here and there. And I've been talking about doing some for like a couple months. But things keep getting in the way. Or just things just keep getting... just Things take longer than you than you expect. It's always how it is. And now I've got a new problem, of course. Let's talk about that. If you didn't follow Twitter or you weren't with the regulars, uh, you, then you don't know. I, uh, I injured my back on the job. I was down and out. I was like a turtle. I couldn't move. I was down on the ground. I was doing my job, doing my work, doing something pretty routine. And then I heard a snap. And then I just fell. I hit the ground. And I could not move. I couldn't do anything. They had to carry me to the hospital. So I'm at the hospital, feeling pretty damn useless. Life broke my back and made me humble. That's what happened there. And I just couldn't do anything. It was incredibly painful. a very painful situation. I'm at the hospital, I'm just, I'm making tweets to try to keep my, uh, my humor up, just trying to keep my spirits up, but I, it was a really, I was really unhappy, I was very, very unhappy with what happened, and I just, like, I'm young, to injure my back is really just not a good feeling, it's not a good feeling at all, it sucked, and I spent a couple days on my back, just sleeping. And then they gave me a back brace. So now I've got a back brace, which wearing shirts over it to, to cover it up. But now I look like I'm a much larger man because of it. But I got a back brace now and it's helping. I'm still in pain, though. Um, the stream's going to be interesting because I'm basically Dr. House right now. I'm in constant pain and it's going to be hard to keep the, the, uh, the smile up. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I blow up or not. And taking pain meds, taking muscle relaxers, taking a lot of things, ice packing it. Eventually, I have to heat pack it, and then eventually, I have to stretch it and then make it stronger and better. And so there's that. But, oh, it hurts. The advice they gave me was this, and I'll tell you guys the advice they gave me. And that was, to make it simple, if you're looking down, you're using your back, you're, you're damaging your back. If you're looking up at the sky or the ceiling, you're more, more likely using your legs instead of your back. So you're not hurting your back. What they were saying is... 
Use your legs. They're built for work, not your back. Your back's not built for work. Don't use your back. Use your legs. Always use your legs. And if you do, then you'll have a, a good back the, your whole life. But if you keep using your back, you're going to waste it, and then you're not going to have a back anymore when you get older. And so that's the advice they gave me. When you're looking down, you're using your back. When you're looking up, you're more likely using your legs. So that's interesting. So I have to do some rehab for, like, I don't know how many weeks after, uh, after a certain point of healing. So that's going to that's gonna affect the channel here and there. We'll see what happens. We'll see how things are affected by it. Um, but yeah, taking pain pills every morning and every night, and they help a little bit. No, they don't perfectly make it so that I don't feel any pain. They just make it that I feel less of pain, I guess. It hurts like a bitch, though. The worst is when you get up and get down. When I gotta get out of a seat, or I gotta get back into bed, or get out of bed, whatever, like, it hurts. It definitely hurts. Not a fun time to mess your back up. So, you know, don't mess your back up, people. Don't do it. Don't do it. The worst is that it has to happen to you before you can warn people about it. That's what sucks. I thought I was doing pretty good with my back. I thought I was doing pretty good back practices. And then, pop! Goes scarf. Well, snap goes scarf. Um, so Fallout's done. The next uh, LP is pretty interesting. It's a hell of a ride. It is worth watching. It is an interesting ride, that game. And after that, uh, I'll just tell you, the LP is going to be Firewatch. And Firewatch is a hell of a ride. What's interesting is the different ways it can be uh, played, sort of. We're going to do, it's going to be a couple, it's going to be six episodes, I believe, and then an afterthought. So I believe there's seven videos to Firewatch, unless we attach the afterthought to the finale. And it's a hell of a story. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting game. And following Firewatch is going to be Hitman. Hitman's going to be episodic, so it's going to be interesting how we do that one. Uh, we'll probably do Hitman for like one or two weeks, depending on how long the first episode is. And then we'll do a different LP. And then we'll come back to Hitman later on whenever uh, the episode, the next episode comes out. Like, the episodes can come out every couple months. I guess the idea there is they didn't... I guess they're not done with Hitman yet. I guess they're they're still developing the game. So they want to just give you the product already. Considering they pushed it back from December. I guess that's what they're doing. That way, at least some of the game comes out already. So we don't have to wait until maybe a summer release or something for the complete game. Is my understanding. That's my guess. That's my assumption, there you go, from uh, the way they're doing it. Because Hitman was supposed to come out before Christmas. And then it did. Because I was planning on buying it then. Um, If we could LP... if we could, The thing is, we can't LP Nintendo games because, well, Nintendo's not so cool to YouTube. But if we could LP 3DS games, so many good games coming out. Bravely Second. Kirby's getting a game. Then there's the Hyrule Warriors uh, for 3DS. Then there's... Uh, what was the other ones? There's a couple other ones coming out as well. I can't remember. Oh, Monster Hunter's coming. There's a lot of games I'd love to, to just show off, but I can't. I'm just going to play for myself for fun. Those games are coming up. Um, just, just for me, just telling you about those. You didn't know about them. They're gonna be, those are really fun. Bravely Default's a really good RPG. Um, anything else? As far as PC release goes, there's some really good one-shots coming up. Some really good one-shots coming up. And um, LP, Firewatch, Hitman. We'll see what comes after Hitman. And then Smites. Uh, Medusa Guide comes up. We're skipping Mercury because he already has a guide. Um, after Mercury would be Nausea. So we're going to do Medusa and then Nausea and whoever comes after that. And I'm going to try to pump out more guides if I can. It really depends on how I feel, how much time I have because of my injury, and just how well I do on the footage. But that right there is the vlog. Um, just be safe with your back, everybody. That's all I got. And it's unfortunate I have to warn that because it happened to me. That's usually what just happens to people. People will usually warn about a problem after it happens to them. And that's just because there's so many problems out there to, to not think about. Because you don't want to just think about everything else. Just get depressed about it all. But, um, there you go. That's the vlog. Uh, I believe the game's still going. I don't remember how long the match is right now. And we'll see how things go the next little bit. So, um, yeah. That is the vlog. I had fun talking about fun watching and listening. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time. And thank you for your likes and your subs. Oh, God. We are 25 subs away from 10,000, by the way. Holy crap, we're almost there. Thank you to Jinx for all the hard work, and see y'all later. Have fun, everybody.
Thank you.